Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns and I teach knitting workshops and today I'm going to tell you about this design which is on my dress form. Uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Um, apologies if you can hear a bit of rumbling in the background. We're on the tail end of a, well I hope it's the tail end of a heat wave um, and we have just had a bit of thunder outside. I think it's kind of moved away now. I have to have the window open because my office is so hot. I can't actually bear to be in here without the window open. Just a little bit, little bit of air in. Also close my curtain. Um, so apologies if you can hear a bit of rumbling. Um, I think I can still hear the thunder in the distance but hopefully you won't be able to hear it but if you can then I do apologize but hoping this means that it will start cooling down a little bit because it's been way too hot for for England we're not we don't have the houses and the equipment for a uh, heat here we don't have air conditioning or anything like that in our house we don't even have a fan so anyway back to what we're going to talk about today so today we're going to talk about this design which is called Varian Bay Varian Bay was first published in the Knitter magazine in issue 141, which was published in September 2019, I think. Yes, yeah, September 2019. I had to check my laptop next to me. Um, I've actually had a new version knitted up. One of my lovely sample knitted knitted a new version for me. Not that I didn't like the original, but I'm not sure the yarn was available anymore. And I also wanted to have it knitted up in the yarn that I actually sell. So the original was knitted in um, Cattle Yarn Company Baskerville, which is a four ply yarn um, and it's a beautiful yarn, but I can't find the original version. I had it knitted up again in Manasa Uruguay Fino. Uh, this is a different colorway, obviously. Uh, Fino is 70% uh, merino wool, wool, 30% silk, and it has 450 meters, which is 490 yards per 100 gram skein. So it has slightly more yardage than most um, yarns of a similar weight do. It doesn't feel any thinner, but it does have more meterage. So when my sample knitter knitted this, she knitted it to the original pattern. And when she sent it back to me, there was still a lot of yarn left. So I decided to undo the cast off and then I added on some rows. So I added on probably from about here added on quite a few rows I think I added on something like 22 rows I normally allow at least kind of 10% yarn left so it was probably about at least 10 grams maybe slightly more than that left um, so it is slightly bigger but it is a one skein shawl so if you have one special skein you can use that for the shawl um, it's designed to be worked in a four ply if you have a four ply yarn that only has 400 meters then you will need to stop um, after I think it's chart C and D. Um, you would need to stop and cast off. So it would be slightly smaller than this. Um, I have a selection of Fino uh, yarns on my website in a selection of colours. So do check those out as well. It only takes one skein. So do check that out. I'm going to pop that back up there. Uh, so let's take a look at the shawl and how you could wear it. So this is, um, I'm putting on my dress form. This is quite a small shawl as it is only a one skein shawl you can make it bigger but because of the shaping it's not that easy to make it bigger i will put a link uh, below um on a blog post i did a while ago uh, on how easy it is to make shawls bigger or smaller uh, you can easily make it smaller but making it bigger is a little bit more difficult so let's just take it off the dress form for a minute so i can show you the shape of it because it is not it's not a normal triangular shape it is actually what i like to call it either a teardrop shape or a heart shape i think teardrop shape probably describes it better so i will try and insert a blocking photograph but so at the top here with just a few stitches and then it is shaped by increasing uh two stitches at the beginning of the row two in the middle and then two at the end of the row so the beginning and end of the row form this top edge along the top here and then the cast off edge is at the bottom here and i've just realized i have left a stitch marker in i need to double check my photos because that stitch marker was in when i took the photos 
that was where I started knitting those 22 rows um, and I thought I'd taken that stitch marker off but I hadn't <laughs> um, so it starts at the top here that scarter stitch to start with so to start with you can just focus on getting the shaping right so if you're new to this type of shawl and you're a little bit um, nervous about it you can actually just start and you don't have to worry about a stitch pattern so you can just focus on getting the shaping right and, and then just knit garter stitch and then by the time you get down to here you will be used to how the shaping works and you probably be starting to get a little bit bored of the garter stitch and then you can carry on with the lace pattern and it's got this quite wide quite intricate looking border but it's a lot easier than it looks um it is fairly basic stitches if you've done lace knitting before if you're new to lace knitting you need to learn three different decreases and how to do a yarn over or yarn forward so it's not that difficult really the pattern has a chart and it has written instructions um so you can just wear it cross your shoulders like that because of the shaping the front edges are longer than on a standard triangular shawl so you can tie the front ends together obviously this will depend a little bit on how big your bust is um, it wouldn't look that good on me if I tied it together because I'm quite a large person and I have a big bust but you can tie it together it doesn't look that great on this dress form either <laughs> to be honest uh, but if you're a fairly petite person I think it would look quite nice to tie it together at the front you can also use a shawl pin so these shawl pins are by uh, a lady called Tatty Squawk she doesn't make these anymore unfortunately but i still have some but i used to stock these but unfortunately i don't anymore so you can um drape the shawl so if i drape one end over that shoulder and then i drape the other end over this shoulder like that i can then put the shawl pin on one shoulder like that for example and it will keep it on you can also just have it hanging down like that and then clip on the, the shawl pin or a shawl pin and then just kind of clip it together at the front there so it's quite nice to wear over a dress a little black dress a little summer dress any kind of dress but you can also wear it as a scarf so quite often i will drape it kind of with the triangle or with a point to one side and then I'll just have one end over and then I'll just throw the other end over my shoulder like that because then it usually stays on without me having to use a shawl pin if it is quite windy and I'm not wearing a coat or anything I might just pin a shawl pin on the shoulder like that just to keep it on uh, but quite often I will wear it without a shawl pin like that so the point is kind of to the side here that looks quite nice if you're wearing a coat quite often it's very popular to um, have the have the um, point at the front and then you just pull the ends around the shoulder and back to the front it's a little bit difficult to do it on this dress form um, like that that can also be done it does hang down quite a long way but that's also quite a good way especially if you're wearing a coat because that means if your coat is open it will still hang on, it will still keep your chest warm and then you can just see those folds of fabric come out under your coat so different ways so you can wear it you can also wear it just slightly off center so in the same way but you just kind of have it slightly off center okay that didn't look very good <laughs> let's see if i can do that better on myself so i would just have the ends of the front it's a little bit hot to put a shawl on today and then i would just bunch it up like that there we go that's much better and then i would wear it like that so it kind of comes down to my bust and then when i put a coat on it kind of keeps my neck and my chest warm so especially if you have a coat that doesn't go all the way up to your chest to your neck if you have a kind of v-neck coat this would look quite nice and it's not too big and bulky but it's still quite warm um i also quite often move that away a little bit so i don't knock it over i will also quite often 
do the same thing so i'll just throw the ends over at the back i will kind of put it sort of slightly off center that can be quite nice as well especially if i'm wearing it um over a thicker jumper or poncho or something like that or just one side oh, i can't do this it's not very easy to style your own shawl is it right so then i have it kind of off to the side a little bit more there we go then it covers my shoulders a little bit as more as well so different ways you can wear it now bear in mind that i am quite big um, I normally prefer my shawls to be a little bit larger because it suits my frame a bit better but especially if I'm wearing one inside a coat um, I find this kind of shape and size quite useful. So oh, that is Varian Bay. I must admit I'm not 100% sure whether it's pronounced Varian Bay or Varian Bay. Uh, I didn't name it. The staff at The Knitter named it when it was first published in The Knitter magazine so I'm not sure that it's Varian Bay or Varian Bay. I'm assuming there's a place called Varian or Varian Bay. So if you know where that is and you know how to pronounce it and you think I'm doing it wrong, do let me know in the comments. Um, so I hope you like this video. I'll link all the patterns below. The pattern is available on um, Payhip and on Ravelry. I will link those below. I'll also add a few photographs of, at the end. And um, I usually do an introductory launch discount when I launch a new pattern and I always put that discount on the pattern page with the um, expiry date as well so do check out if there is any discount information there and um, if you see this video in the future or after the discount has finished please do consider subscribing to my newsletter or if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter yet please consider subscribing to my newsletter because you'll be notified every time I release a pattern and you'll also be the first one to hear about discounts and that kind of thing. Do look in the notes below this video. If Depending on what device you're watching on, you either click show more or you click like a down arrow. Um, so do go and have a look and all the links will be there. The links to where you can find the yarn, where you can find the pattern and all my social media and how to subscribe to my newsletter. So thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and i will see you next time thank you for watching